Next, I want to talk about Parseval's theorem. This is a very nice theorem about the energy of a signal. Let me give the theorem for continuous time Fourier transform. It says that the energy of x of t is equal to the energy of x of f. What that means is, in equations, it's saying that this is the formula for the energy. The, you integrate the, absolute, the magnitude of x of t for all time. Oh, squared, sorry, magnitude squared. And that that's the same as if you calculate it in frequency, magnitude squared of x of f. That's a marvelous relationship there. It's uh, Basically, it means uh, mathematically that the uh, continuous time Fourier transform is unitary. Any unitary transform will have this property that the, the norms are preserved after, before and after the transform. So if we wanted to know what's the energy of sink of T, well, we can just take, say that that's equal to the energy of rect of t. And that's much easier to calculate. Sink, you know, if you plug that in with an integral, sine of pi t over pi t, you're going to have more work to do in calculating the integral. And here, you don't have much work to do because rect squared equals rect. So we're integrating rect, so we get 1. So now we know the energy of sink is 1. Great. Now this same property holds... Um, there is a Parseval theorem in for the other transforms, the discrete time Fourier transform and for the Fourier series, but you have to just change them slightly. So for the discrete time Fourier transform, of course, the um, energy of x of uh, n equals, it's a little bit different because x of f is periodic now, and so it's not going to have an energy. Um, so we'll fill in what that is in a minute. Let me give the formula. It's going to be, um, let me write it down here. So it's the energy of xn. In frequency, it would be calculated as the integral just over one period. So negative half to half of x of f squared df. Okay, so not to negative infinity infinity because remember in discrete time, this is periodic. That would not be meaningful. If you integrate it from negative infinity to infinity, you would get infinity always as your answer. And that doesn't mean every discrete time signal has an infinite energy. Now you'll notice something here. I've integrated over one an, an interval of length 1. So that's the same as averaging. So it turns out the right side here is in fact the power. That's kind of a nice little coincidence. It's the power of x of f. So x of f, like we said, is periodic. It has a power. The power in the frequency domain is the energy in time domain. I know it's a little bit bizarre. Maybe not the way most people remember it. They just remember this formula instead, that you, the energy equals this. But it happens to be the power in frequency. Now, let's go, um, let's go a little bit get some space here. We also can do Parseval's for the Fourier series. So let's say the, the continuous time Fourier series. And what we get now, this is a periodic in time, right? Periodic in time. So we're not going to talk about the energy anymore of this signal in time. We're going to talk about the power of x of t. Okay, And try to relate it somehow to the Fourier series coefficient turns out that it's going to equal the sum k equals negative infinity to infinity of the magnitude squared of the coefficients, which you could say is the energy of those coefficients, right? The energy of, let me say, the set of coefficients here. Okay, so the sequence of coefficients and uh, if you want, you can think of it as a discrete time signal, and this is its energy. Uh, so, now, um, lastly, now, for, let me justify this a little bit, actually. Here's a justification. Notice that we have, by the Fourier series, we have x of t equals this sum, this infinite sum, 
a k e to the i 2 pi uh, k over um, t t. Okay, now this is okay. First of all, what is the power of any one of these for a given k? This has power equals one. Okay, because this is a magnitude one. It's just a complex exponential. Magnitude one is one everywhere. You square one, you get one. So the power is one of any one of these guys in the sum. The problem is we have a sum of them. You cannot say, so it is not true that the power of two s signals added, x1 of t plus x2 of t, equals the power of x1 of t plus the power of x2 of t, okay, I'm saying this is not true in general, okay, but, I mean, you could convince yourself that's not true, just let x2 equal negative x1, both of them will have positive power, but over here we would have zero, all right, so that's not true in general, however, it is true if x1 and x2 are normal, are uh, orthogonal, sorry, orthogonal to each other, all right, so equal if x1 is orthogonal to x2. Okay. But what do we know about each of these signals here, these complex exponentials? They actually are orthogonal to each other. We, we talked about this during the Fourier, when we derived the Fourier series formula. So um, therefore, they each have power 1 and they're orthogonal. Of course, once you multiply them by a number, the power is no longer 1. The power is the magnitude squared of a k. All right. So for each term here, we have a mag. The power is the magnitude squared of h a k, and just add them all up because they're orthogonal. There we go. Lastly, the formula for um, the discrete time Fourier series. Again, periodic in time. I'm just going to remind you of that time. And here I'm going to say period n because we need, um, well, then the power of this thing is, by the same argument above, it's the sum of the individual powers of each element. However, we don't sum everything, because remember, when we reconstruct the Fourier series um, whoops, in discrete time, we don't actually sum over all k, because it's periodic again, we sum over the first n elements. Okay, and then it would repeat, and you don't keep summing it up. Now, you notice a pattern that uh, we have, like, power equals energy here. We had energy equals power in the Fourier transform, right, right here. And we had energy equals energy, and so there's some sort of pattern, and if you want to continue that pattern, you would say, um, you would say, well, this looks like power equals, this is, power. This is similar to power. What's the difference? Well, um, if, gosh, if we think of that as a discrete time signal, power, and it's periodic with period cap n, power would be 1 over n times that. So this is like, it's like n times the power of those that discrete time signal. So it's not exactly power. All right. The, so if, if that confuses this is like n times power. All right. If it confuses you, like, oh, everything else was so simple, why is this one different? Then just remember the derivation we had from continuous time. The reason we sum them up is because they're each orthogonal, and each one has power 1 well, times the magnitude squared of ak. This is exactly the same reason. So it shouldn't be normalized or anything. It's just sum them up.